Hey YouTubers, this is Rob Moffat. Good morning. This video is about another video I made a few months ago about a little inexpensive, quick and dirty, uh, inflatable raft sailboat that I made. It cost about $100 in parts. And I said at a time that I was going to show you the parts individually, the details about them and the cost. So this is the video. It took me a long time to make this video because I was a little embarrassed. It's such a quick and dirty uh, project. I was kind of embarrassed but I figured it's going to help somebody. Uh, here, here's the, the, the sailboat. I, I purchased this sail from Jim Luckett. He uh, sells, uh, sails on his uh, website. It's a 45 square foot sail. It's the smallest one I could find. You can make your own sail. Uh, there's a man, David Goodchild. He has probably the best low cost, quick and dirty sails on YouTube. Uh, he's got a Gary channel. You want to check him out, and also check out uh, uh, Mr. Luckett on all his videos. She can give you a lot of good information by looking at his videos. He shows the the uh, sailboats, the little rafts that he makes into sailboats. You can get good information from looking at his videos too. But here's the one I made, and here's the prices that I broke down the different parts, uh, except for the battery and some scrap wood and the sail. It costs about 110 bucks. And here's the wood shop that I work in. You guys have never seen a tour of my wood shop. I'll give you a quick 10 second tour. And here's my main woodworking equipment, my Rockwell Blade Runner. <laughs> well, let's get to the hardware store. Let, let's look at the lumber. The first piece was fur, beveled siding. Fur, it was about 10 bucks. It's a really nice material, 12 foot long. And I use it to make the lee boards. It's thin on one side and fat on the other. It's a perfect piece of wood. You can uh, whittle down and make a nice foil to make a, a lee board. Quick and dirty. It's very, very uh, lightweight and super cheap. Uh, in fact, the more I thought about it, I almost thought about getting some uh, thin sheet metal and putting over the wood, make like a composite. But since I didn't want to spend a lot of time, I didn't do it. But it's something I might do in the future. You could use the wood as a form, put sheet metal over it, that way you wouldn't have to use any fiberglass at all. It makes some pretty cool lee boards. And the rest of the wood was also just as inexpensive. The 2x3s were $2, the 2x2s were just about the same price. The, the spars I made out of uh, electrical conduit, $2 a piece, 8 foot long, I think 10 foot long. That's probably the cheapest, strongest stuff you can buy at the hardware store and hardly anybody uses it for projects on YouTube videos. I was reluctant to use it for the spars. It's It just went against the whole grain of, you don't do that. I mean, <laughs> they'll rust and they'll, when they bend, they don't bend back. It's it's just not the right stuff to use for spars, but I gave it a shot. And for the sail I use, it's a very, very small sail, very small forces, small loads put on it. It worked out pretty good, so I was surprised. Also, my Rockwell Blade Runner, it cuts the metal very well. It's, it's an attribute of the Blade Runner I've not seen many people talk about. It works with metal pretty good. And also, uh, I use a lot of scrap wood that I found. Like to make the battery box, here's the battery box that I have that uh, bolts down to the floorboard. As you can see on the left of this photo, there is a little square box I made. That's the mass step. That's where the mass goes in. And there's going to be brackets on the bottom of this box that will affix to the wooden floorboard of the boat, which is the most important part of the boat, actually. Here's a picture of the Schumacher. That's the uh, little battery charger. If you don't put your battery on a charger, once you buy it, it'll go bad eventually. I ruin more batteries by not keeping them topped up uh, than anything. Uh, you want to take good care of your battery. You just don't put it away and think it's going to last forever if you don't keep it topped up. Here's how I made my battery box. I found a somebody threw out a cabinet. It's, I think it's birch wood. It's extraordinary nice material. They threw it away. So it was sitting there in a dump. I got it and I cut it in half with my jigsaw. Then as I was taking it apart, I realized the back of it slides in the slot. So I made it to the top, made it to the top of the, the battery box. And I didn't plan it that way, just fiddled around and that's what it worked out. And it, it it's perfect. And then I took the scrap from the box and made some brackets to attach to the bottom of the uh, floorboard there. And here you can see the battery box and you've got the mast into the mast step at the front and you the little uh, brackets at the bottom where the bolts are going to go in. And these little hook things on the side 
here that's where you're going to have uh, the thwart that goes across that you attach your lead boards. Here's a picture of the steering oars. These are not paddles, these aren't oars, these are steering oars. So just a big piece of uh, quarter inch ply bolted into the ends of the 2 by 2s And I've got uh, a little thing to attach the oars to the boat. There's a PVC collar and there's a bolt that goes there and there's a piece of wood that goes over the bolt and that is going to go down into a uh, another piece of wood that uh, will be on the stern of the boat attached to the motor mount allow me to steer it. Here is where I cut the ends off of the oars and made some handles really crude. Uh, this is the brackets on the end. There's a lot of forces on the brackets uh, from the lead boards so you might want to beef these up if your boat's bigger or your sails bigger but it worked out fine for mine. Um, but I would maybe think about beefing them up if your wood is too soft. Here's the lee boards. The lee boards have bolts that goes in the top. I should have used the butterfly nuts to tighten up the bolts better uh, because that was one problem I had when I was sailing. They kept popping up on me. And you can see where I've put another piece of siding on the top that way I squared it out. See it's, it's thin on one side and flat on the other so by reversing it and putting on top there, I made it square so it'll fit flush against the brackets. I'm pretty happy with the lead boards. I thought they worked out pretty good. And this is a piece of wood that goes across, it's a thwart that goes across the battery box and you attach the lead boards on the end. And these little pieces of wood on the bottom keep it from sliding back and forth. Now this line that's there, the piece of rope, that line there, that attaches that thwart to the boat. That way, if the lee boards hit something, hit the bottom, they're not attached super solid to the box and they won't break apart. This way, they're kind of flexible. That line, it'll keep it secure, but if you hit something really hard, it'll be some give to it and you won't break it apart. Um, now, here's the thwart that the uh, goes across the uh, steering or the the motor mount on the back and there's little holes on the ends where the little pieces of wood from the steering oar fit down into and these are little brackets that I made from the scrap wood and I think I used the drywall screws here's a picture of the boat that I had a piece of wood on the back I was still making up my mind what to do I was thinking about attaching that wood to the back because then I'd have a good place for my cup holders <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I was going to put the wood in the back, but I changed my mind. I was going to make that into the uh, motor mount. But since I had an old motor mount, I went ahead and used it. But you could make your own motor mount uh, just as well. This is a picture of the motor mount that I bought on eBay for about 15 bucks. You can make your own out of wood, though. You don't have to buy one. And here's another close-up of the battery box with the thwart. And now for the sale, I bought a 45 square foot sale from Jim Luckett, but you can make your own. Uh, I just use a regular 2x2, two two, and this is one of the biggest mistakes I made on the boat. The 2x2, two two, you shouldn't have a square mast. You should have round on the edges because the goose neck on the, the, the uh, sail kept binding on it when I tried to lower the sail. The mast should have been round. Uh, the also this line that's on there it's super thin it was super cheap that was wrong uh, because it's so it's almost like a shoelace it's so thin and so it's in danger of binding up onto the block on the pulley and also when I put it onto my cleat the cleat was in the wrong place so it was difficult to get to and because the line was so small it jammed on the cleat so this was one of the worst problems I had sailing the boat I should have used a much thicker uh, a better line and uh, I should have made the mast more round so the gooseneck would slide up and down onto it. Now you can go to uh, David Goodchild's site and he'll show you how to make some really cheap sails if you don't want to buy your own. Uh, uh, here's a close-up of the gooseneck. It's just two pieces of wood. There's a brass bolt that goes through the first piece of wood and there's a nut in the washer and the second piece of wood clamps onto it and then 
that's permanent and then that whole assembly is wired on to the spar that, uh, that, that the sail attaches to and then I put tape over the wire so it wouldn't damage the sail. Um, it's pretty secure but you probably want to see if you can get some aluminum pipe instead of PVC because PVC is not really that great a material. It's going to fail at the mo worst time. It's going to fail when it's under strain when you don't want it to fail. So it's, you'd be better off using uh, even wood with fiberglass uh, a tube or uh, aluminum tube or something instead of PVC. But this was just quick and dirty, guys. So just a word of warning. And the spars at the ends just drilled holes and put some um, eye bolts through it and then made a shackle, or not made, bought a shackle and then and wired the shackle down so it wouldn't come apart. And that's how to attach the two uh, spars to, to make the uh, lateen sail for for the, uh, the 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 sail for the boat and the little anchor <laughs> I was gonna make my own anchor but I saw this on Amazon for 12 bucks I couldn't help myself uh, don't go out on a boat that doesn't have an anchor guys uh, don't ask me or ask me why I know that I tell you I could tell you some stories all right here's the finished boat like I said the biggest problem I had was the sail it wouldn't come down because it would bind up on the square mass. Also, the main sheet that I've got is ridiculous. I should have paid more attention to what Jim Luckett did. He just tied a rope onto his, his spar there, his boom, and he didn't mess around with pulleys and main sheets because they kept tangling on everything. The, the sail could have been a little higher, and also I think the lee boards could have been a little bit farther forward. And also, finally, if you look at Jim Luckett, <laughs> I'm not used to sailing with steering oars. He just lifts up his steering oar and it changes the center of gravity and, and makes his boat tack into the wind automatically. And I kept trying to tack like using them as rudders and it just didn't tack as well as I had hoped. But if I had done what Jim does on his video, I would have been a lot off, bet better off. So I hope you like this little video. And uh, if you have a base of rivers, protected waters, canals, ponds, and get a cheap $40 uh, new on, on Amazon uh, inflatable raft mine's 10 years old PVC still working fine uh, put in a solid floorboard and start fooling around and you're gonna have a lot of fun if you have any questions guys be happy to answer and uh, hope to see you out there uh, it's you're gonna get a lot of people make fun of you <laughs> with a inflatable toy out there but uh, and it, it's not a laser it's not a sunfish it's not gonna go to windward like you want but uh, it, it'll, it'll go to wind for a little bit, and so long as you don't get hit by a lot of uh, waves, uh, it, it, it'll be okay. You need some weight forward to keep it from popping up on you in the front there. But ask me any questions, guys. I hope I can help you out, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy yourself. And uh, I add new videos every week. And also, I've got a playlist on my channel called uh, Little Inexpensive Boats, too. Check that out, too. And Mr. Goodchild and Mr. Lockett, their, their sites. Thanks, guys, and uh, y'all come back. See you next week.